Greetings, Vikings. Bottom on here. Thanks for tuning in to Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords, which originally aired live on Twitch. Okay. It's too late for caution. Oh, God. <laughs> Disastrous mistreatment. It takes me a moment to realize or to recognize. And he is so bruised and swollen, he barely looks human. As I grab his hand, my husband attempts to speak, but no sound passes his lips. The rattling physician is standing in the corner of the room, anxiously wringing her hands. Um, so she could become a chastised uh, physician for five years where he had a botched health treatment. Uh, I can say we knew the risks you were forgiven, where her opinion of me goes up. He's still botched. Um, I can tell her to be imprisoned. He is still botched. Or I can set her to death and yet still botched. So there's four choices here. here. Um, chastise her. Forgive her. Lock her up. Or, or set her to die. What's her learning? Uh, her learning is 13, and she is a renowned physician. She's not bad. She's not bad. Uh, compared to the one that's in my prison here, she has a learning of 21. So, there's also the option of forgiving her, but then uh, firing her and trying to recruit Scold, who is a, um, a 21 knowledge sorry Yoda's on the floor okay uh, we knew the risks you were forgiven is going to be the choice here that's the popular choice should I switch to scald if I can so this physician that is in my my prison here for 22 months I might be able to negotiate a release with a hook where I then use that hook to recruit her because she is a ridiculously good physician. Um, also, if not a physician, we could put her in, uh, <laughs> you know, in my goatee position too, but... Um, okay, don't switch to her. Should she be my, uh, should be, she, should Scald be on the council as, you know, the, the religious position, given her, uh, capacity. If, if I can, again, if I can, there's no guarantees here. Now, why didn't I raid here? Okay. All right, let's try to release her with a hook, then. So, prisoners. Uh, yeah, I recruit her. I can't recruit and gain re hook, so I instantly recruit her. She looks very, um, angry. I have no choice but to accept. I mean, is it really that bad? I'm gonna put you in quite a position. Sorry, dude. Your rum priest endorses me. Well, yeah. And sway. Sorry, husband. I'm not swaying you anymore. So she is giving me more piety. Um. There's also um. There's also the thing about educating children. So let me take a look at that again. We have uh, Can, who was originally going to focus... Who's his guardian? His guardian is me, but we could switch to Scald. Should I swap to Scald Guardian? If we want to make him more knowledgeable. Because he, he started off as a pensive um, 
So it might be more in his personality to study in that route and be a learned uh, planner. And it looks like you all are kind of agreeing with me that uh, that uh, I should absolve myself as guardian. No, 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 no. Just, just, just me. Uh, remove guardian and educate can from prison to council to to guardian of of the king the soon to be king or the eventual king of the kingdom that is a uh, that is a rise for her uh, far beyond what she probably deserves. But, uh, yeah. Alright, did we raid? No, why aren't we raiding these places? I don't know what's going on. Why can't raid here? Oh, because I'm in a peace treaty with them, aren't I? Because I just de recently declared war on them. Yeah, okay, so let's go north, where I don't have a peace treaty. That's what's going on, I just realized. Because we have a treaty until... No, we don't have a treaty, what? Maybe someone knows what's going on. You think I'll want Skull to like me more? Oh, I, I'm aware. Um, I'm uh, currently doing a sway for her already, where we're trying to sway her, so... I'm already, I'm already on top of that. It's weird to be, like, as pious as we are. I really wasn't expecting to be this pious. There we go. Now we're raiding. Why weren't we raiding down here? I really don't get it. Uh, let me check my kingdom's truce with Dag. Oh, yeah, okay. So I do have a truce here, but I could raid this spot. Good to know, because this is uh, a 15 raid loot. Fire and blood. So, simple choice here. Should we pillage it or not? We've taken enough, would spend piety, and we need more, would gain gold and prestige. Am I commanding my own army? Yes, I am. Okay, we take it all. Bring me the plunder. I can challenge uh, Dorgil by combat. To, uh, to the death. He has a prowess of four. Who is he? Orkney? Um, should I fight that old dude and kill him? <laughs> I don't know how else to put this. <laughs> yes or no? Should I, should I fight the old dude and kill him? So uh, my prowess is 18, his prowess is four. It's, it's not much of a fight. Here's a defender trying to stop me from uh, raiding. Oh man, so they let me siege or to, to plunder. And then not only that, but then they're trying to besiege. It's kind of funny. So it looks like you all want me to challenge my combat. So why he committed crimes against me, adulterer? Who did, wait, when? Who did he do? What? I'm so confused. Uh, whatever. Try by combat. Let's see if he can... 
Here we go. May the best woman win. Trial by combat begins. All right. So first, uh, for brief, uh, for a brief moments, uh, Chieftain Thorgal and I pace in lazy half circles, each watching for an opening. I heft my axe, ready to defend myself, while he clutches his axe firmly to hand. Only one of us is walking away from here today, and I intend it to be me. With a sudden twitch, our bout begins. Thorgal shares Freya's witchcraft scum. Okay, she's really screaming, screams my opponent, whirling his axe furiously at, around, and near me. So I have multiple choices here. I can strike parry and repulse, which is a high likelihood of success, a medium likelihood of injury. Um, I can taunt him, a low likelihood of success, no risk of injury, and I lose some stress. My stress currently is 36. Or I can... Um, Intimidate him. So I can play, I can strike parry and repulse. I can play defensively to tire him out. Or I can intimidate him, which is, you know, even less likely to, to, uh, yeah, it, uh, okay. Interesting. Uh, let me, uh, let me put this up. Oh, boy. He's 66. Man, it really is like bashing an old man. Okay. Looks like the overwhelming is just to, to kill him quickly. All right, next choice. Uh, I leap into action, launching a flurry of quick slashes, driving myself hard against Thorgil's guard, wearing him down with each expertly timed strike. Thorgil tries hesitantly to launch a quick slash at me, but the blow is easily swatted away. My form is good, with only small errors, and Thorgil's stance is a disaster. My opponent's guard is fierce, and I feel far, uh, and I feel far from victory. Okay. So, I can... Taste the worth of tear, uh, high chance of success, high chance of injury. With Thorgal, medium chance of success and high risk of injury. Uh, I can tire him out, which is low chance of success, no chance of injury, and uh, a loss of stress. Or again, I can intimidate him. Wear the old man out. Seems to be the case. I'll leave this up for a few more seconds. Jarl Sarlin. Gonna chop this dude's head off. Okay. Next. Time and again, I backpedal, dodge, and weave. Always keeping just within tempting target distance. Soon, Thorgal showing signs of exhaustion. Spotting an opportunity, Thorgal lunges forward and headbutts me hard in the face. I reel backwards, wrong-footed. My form is decent, with some lapses, and Thorgal's stance is a disaster. I've yet to open my opponent's guard at all, and see no way yet to claim victory. So, I can provoke him with no likelihood of, ex of uh, success, medium risk of injury, but he becomes taunted, which... Um, Increases his stress. What has happened is that uh, both he and I have a prowess uh, penalty now. So my prowess is temporarily four lower. But his prowess is a flat zero. Basically, he's a wet rag trying to fight me. I can, instead of uh, taunting him, I can confidently attack with medium likelihood of success, low risk of injury... Or I can try to intimidate him. No likelihood of excess. Uh, low risk of injury. And uh, he gains more handicap. Uh, 
I find it a little weird because it looks like um, it looks like he's already handicapped and he gains the same handicap. So I don't really know if there's truly an advantage of him being, being double handicapped. But whatever. Okay, two it is. He's dead. Uh, confidence is half of any fight, and I throw out fluidly quick slashes with all the confidence of this seasoned expert. When I judge the time to be right, I switch up my pattern with a surprise side swipe that takes Thorgal right in the belly. The strike hurls my foe backwards, something red and vital looking sliding limply out of the new hole he topples to the ground. I approach with some caution, but soon it becomes clear the shock is setting in. Taking a moment to kick away his axe just in case, I prepare to put Thorgal out of his misery. Goodbye, Chief Thorgal. Result. I win single combat against Thorgal due to his injury risk score. Trial by combat victory. Resting easy back in popcorn. Well, I'm not really in popcorn. Uh, I exult my success. My axe laid across my lap. Chief Chieftain Thorgal's blood still kicks in fresh grooves and notches along the weapon's heft, reminding me of the man's last moments. Yesterday, we put a quarrel before gods, and the gods answered wisely. Right on. Killed the old man. <laughs> it's not much of a not much of a fight, but hey. Okay, we raided this place. There's no reason to continue raiding. Uh they have an army marching against me, but like I don't really care about fighting their army. So I'm just gonna keep raiding. Cause these guys weren't even really fighting me, they were just actually sieging. So right now, Nalm is getting raided by me. Uh, I'll just keep raiding Nalm. I think this is the last Nalm city, and then I'll I'll probably resolve this raid because I don't want to make new enemies. I don't mind having Nalm be my enemy because it seems like somewhat likely. Oh, here's a choice. It seems somewhat likely that Nalm and I will come to head in a battle soon, but. Uh, uh, so I don't mind them hating me, but I don't want everyone else to hate me. Plunder. Okay, I'm on it. Plundered. Okay, let's reset. This raid is over. And... Now... We have... Oh, organized levy. So in Enheim, we have organized service, which increases taxes. Nice. Nice. You're starting to pay actual taxes there. Um, it's only 36% lower due to low control. Uh, Scald was swayed, so she her opinion of me goes up, and loot just got delivered of 70 gold. Um, awesome. So I'm going to have this standing army for a little while just to make sure that uh, no one is coming for me post-raid. But, uh, the money. How should we spend? How should we spend this money? We can either save it, build in... Uh, what is it? Archime? Build in Popcorn. Build in Ladeheim. Build in Emheim. Deft Diplomacy. My Chancellor, Stang, has worked hard to convince our neighboring realms and vassals that the peace treaty I entered with Jarl Dag is flawed. And I am free to declare war on him, which is uh, Upland. Cool. It's good to know. So there are a new Jarl Dag here is a new uh, a new contested. You know, I can go to war with them. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone backing me up like uh, like Sweden anymore. Man, that really, really 
uh, was a short offered to become to come to the aid of an ally oh I could offer to join a war of theirs against they're against uh, these guys King Gardar of that might be an interesting choice all right, so build in Ladaheim. Uh, all right, let's build in Ladaheim. And we can build... What to build? War camps. Which uh, increases levies and uh, one more night. Gathering halls. Which is levy and control. Or markets. Which is uh, for money. And then, then I'll have you vote on whether or not I aid... Uh, this the Swedish king in his war to become an ally. But we're, we're becoming a, a bit of a queen ourselves. I mean, we, we have not an insignificant uh, army here. So now, uh, yeah, Scald is liking us. I'm gonna I'm gonna increase that a little bit more because she's kind of an important person. Uh, all right, gathering halls it is. Should I aid the King of Sweden? I don't really know that he needs my help, but... Um, oh, I, you know what? I have enough money to build something else, too, by the way. So I could, uh, I could do two buildings. I'll put that last pole up again. I'm going to disband my armies so I don't have to pay such a high price for enlisting them because I don't think any raiders kind of come messing with me. Okay. Looks like you want me to aid the king. So. Offer to join war. Oh, you know what? He doesn't even want my help. Because I can't select... Yeah, I can't uh, I can't become allies with them through this method. I thought I could, but I, I can't. Uh, he likes me, though. Yeah, it's weird that... Uh, that there was the, the option and not, uh, I can't do anything. Um, huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Hmm. Yeah, he likes me, but not that much. I know, his father liked me more. But uh, we're, we're, my son, uh, who's heir to the throne, is married to his sister. Unfortunately, she's a gambler. Or, yes, sister. Yep. Okay. Uh, another building. So, more money. Um, save it. Build in popcorn. Build in Emheim. Build in Ladaheim. Well, actually, I can't build in Ladaheim. Build in um, Archheim. Because uh, Ladaheim's already already currently building something. Okay. It does reduce my prestige when I do this, but... Um, it improves the territories significantly. So, there's two sides of that. I wonder how it looks against the... Oh my god, wait. How many allies do you... 10k? What in the hell? Who are you allied with? Jesus. You're allied to... Who? Hmm. 
Jarl Rothgar. I don't even know who that is. Obviously, that is not someone I can mess with right now. And Jarl... This, this Jarl, too. Oh, you look tooled up. All right, building popcorn. Doing a uh, local reinvestment. So we have got Palisades. War camps. Or uh, gathering halls. Oops, I left off gathering halls. There we go. So Palisades is defense, levies, garrison. War camps is levies, knights. And gathering halls is levies in control. And prestige. Looks like war camps is going to be the thing. There it is. Made good financial decisions, I hope. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is... Because we're not currently at war, I'm going to send my... My councilman to go shore up Archheim for a lot more control much, much more quickly uh, so that it can uh, come into the fold a little bit better. Because currently it uh, it's, it's wild out there. So I've got uh, increased development in country from my steward, um, which uh, helps out with the... Actually, you know what? Let me do development here to help building at home the war camps and then uh my marshal tyke is uh increasing control um in our time which will uh which will allow me to you know have them pay taxes and that kind of thing because and emheim is barely paying taxes at 0 0.04 or 0 0.4 um Ladaheim is barely paying taxes too, but Archheim's paying nothing because they're they're it's basically just rabble out there. It's just out of control. Okay, if you have any uh, large goals to submit, anything that you think I should be doing, uh, submit them now. What I will say is, it looks like although these guys have tons and tons of allies and they're kind of scary. Um, they are raidable. Nibelheim include well, Nibelheim doesn't have any loot. But that has loot. This has no loot. Never mind. Yeah, there's barely any loot. There's some loot. If we want to risk it. But of course, they have big numbers if uh, I do draw their ire. But my levies are just about topped up. Like another month or so will be topped up. So there's, join the dueling society, um, or scheme to murder the Jarl that took Nibelheim. I actually don't even know if it's the same Jarl, but the one that, uh, the one that, the Jarl that's currently in there, he's a bold villain. The one that's currently in there 
is this guy. Uh, Jarl Tor. I don't know if he was the Jarl. I think it was his father, actually, that took it. And he's kind of dead. But I'll, I'll wait for there to be a few more options as well. Okay, so control. Going up pretty good. Interesting uh, music here. This gold was not swayed. Okay. Let's see if there's any other alliances to be made. I'll check on this again. Okay, nope. Because it wouldn't be terrible for me to have um, strong alliances so that I can avoid being the sole focus of... Uh, of any sort of enemies without, you know, any backup. Well, okay. nope. Wait, you look young. No. Unfortunately, that old man didn't last very long, and, uh... The real benefit is gone. And yeah, no one really has wars for me to join in, so it's just me waiting around for opportunities to present themselves. There is the uh, Grand Blot that I could uh, kick off. Where we can decide the skill of the festival. It's a big festival to... Uh... Oh, never mind. Mercy for the mercenaries. The bustling of an inn, a fine cider, a calm evening after a long day of training. My tankard is knocked out of my hand by a mercenary reeling from a blow. And all hope of relaxation drains away into the floor along with my cider. Please, my lady, the caper begs. Wolf's thugs have been drinking me dry without paying for days, and their fighting is scaring the staff and guests. Um, okay, that's him, the captain. Not very high prowess there. Uh, so there's three, ch there are three choices here. I will pay for your drinks. If you leave it once, so I lose money, which I don't exactly have, I get generosity to mercenaries, which reduces the cost to hire mercenaries and some martial lifestyle experience. I uh, have the soldiers throw them out, so I get expunged bandits, uh, which is popular uh, popular opinion for me, and also mar martial lifestyle. Or, alternatively, I uh, fight them myself, which I gain ex respect from bandits, Martial life experience and expunged bandits. Um, to me, I think the options are kind of obvious, but uh, you are welcome to vote. And Lion, Lion's King, thanks for the follow. How do I rate the game so far? You know, I've been far more successful than I thought it would be, given that I started with a single tiny territory, no husband, no children barely an army um i'm actually quite surprised that this hasn't gone sour but the game in general i i rather like it is a lot of fun all right uh i guess i never okay that's the wrong pull uh you all are saying three i'm just gonna do three there we are i'm gonna do stalwart leader Switching it up just a little bit, just so that I can get that huge amount of prowess just for adopting Stalwart Leader. Because now my prowess is 22. I'm a head chopper. I'm a head chopper. For sure. Right, Yoda? Yoda, Yoda doesn't agree. He thinks I'm too nice. Oh, Sky comes of age. With her coming of age, my tuition of Sky is at an end. Here she is. Uh, with sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards warfare, such as Sky, oh, I pushed her towards warfare, can come to truly understand it. She has shown great aptitude 
both in battle tactics and management of armies. It is a shame she will never command armies. Um, so she gains skilled tactician. Hoo -hoo. And a lot of st oh wow, damn. It's 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 a shame she'll never command armies. But oh boy, she is uh. Look at that. She's takes after mama, quite a bit. Intelligent, skilled tactician. Patient, brave, and diligent. Um, now, there is a way to potentially form an alliance. Uh, now, the, the game allows you to, like, marry people off regardless of their age, but I'm going to try to find someone, like, of reasonable age. So, she's 16. Here's the 16-year-old. And um, what is this guy's... Where are you? They are here. That's not that helpful to me, I don't think. It's like not a terrible marriage. Pulls. Here's a Norse marriage. Jomtaland. But it's uh, 16 and 19 is not too crazy. Um, do you think... Oh, wow. And they'll even be born into House Valandia? All right. Um, how's this... Marriage look. Essentially, the offspring, it's it's sort of a way to annex um, their territory more peacefully. I have, um, I've never actually got a war directly with him. He's uh, 19 years old. And if you're wondering what he's like, he is paranoid, deceitful, and content. An elusive shadow and a Varangian. So very, very high intrigue. He's he's a bit of a, a bit of a shadowy dude. He's content at least. Yep. You know, terrible, terrible diplomacy there. Okay. We're gonna send a proposal there. The traits of intelligence are still inheritable, which is good. And finish that off. Let's take a look. Uh, Sky Valandia can marry. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. We already sent a proposal. And she can be made into a shield maiden. So that was another option. If she was made into a shield maiden, um, you know, she would gain the uh, trait shield maiden. And... Uh, you know, she would act as a soldier instead of, uh, instead of, you know, she would role play as man. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But there we are. Indeed, we have formed an alliance with Jamtalund here. Um, so it's this guy's heir? Yes. So we married Sky to the heir of Jamtalund. Um, that works. Okay. In terms of major or minor decisions here. Oh, increased control. Deserting levies are lost. Good. So that's in our time. So control is going to be going up significantly more due to the the levies, which is good. My stress is not that high. I don't think I need to call a hunt. I am very close to being able to raise a runestone, uh, money-wise. I think in just one month, that will be possible. And let's take a look. Given the time I have left, um... Maybe additional rating. Neighboring ruler one. So chieftain of these guys beat chieftain of I don't even Okay, so they they Upland Upland is really losing hard. Um here's a question. 
for you all. And I'll just reject these because it looks like I'm not going to get enough options. Should I go to war with Nam or Raid? So going to war with Nam might give me the opportunity to annex this area. And then raiding, of course, would fund improvements to our own territory. Incognito. Alright, tonight I have stripped myself of every symbol signifying my rank to walk anonymously among my soldiers. It is a quiet evening, so... When the argument breaks out, the words reach me loud and clear. An infantryman is trying to convince his commander, my spymaster, Kari, of the advantages of an alternative strategy. Kari will hear none of it. As I approach, the inferior man raises his fist. Step in and protect the soldier. 41% chance to gain a martial lifestyle perk. 58% chance to gain the uh, fought a seasoned warrior. Uh, with 33% chance to gain wounded. That's option number one. Let me put these down. So go to war with Nam is what we'll do. Let me put that down. Option number two is make an example out of them for fighting. Uh, I gain dread. Kari gains wounded. He doesn't like me as much. Or sneak away and gain innovative strategy where my marshal goes up but my minimum battle roll um, gets set to minus two and my movement speed goes up. Um, so, some good good choices there. Number one is a bit of a gamble for experience and fought a season warrior for prowess. And number three is a martial minimum battle roll and movement speed. Number two is dread. And uh, my spy master Kari, as referenced, like, could not like me anymore. Um, so, that's not so much an issue. One. Knowing the consequences of harming a commander, the soldier does nothing to defend himself from the incoming blows. As blood is drawn, I throw myself between them. Perhaps I should have known better to brawl with the seasoned warrior. In the end, I must reveal I must reveal my identity to, for Kari to let me go. I skulk back to my tent before the news spreads. Um, I got a. I got wounded, but I got the benefits as well. So as you can see, I have a little scar on my face. Oh, yeah. But I will have uh, fought a season warrior. Oh, I'm already healed. I, I got a talent. Yep. Heal instantly. All right, well, uh, with the little remaining time I have, let me move my rally flag way up north. I could declare war on Chieftain whatever your name is. I am going to uh, gain the title of the whole duchy. Because that's... I can also call my ally, but I don't need to. I don't... Uh, I don't think I, that's necessary here. This is going to be... Uh, One-sided. I could call my ally if they call on their ally. But unless that happens, we'll keep the allies out of this. What units do I have in my army? I have uh, 300 bowmen, 200 Ascarls, and levies with uh, ridiculously good champions. Oh. Yeah, my champions are absurdly good. So that's always wonderful. 
So here's the siege. We're getting progress 1.5 per day. Um, sickness is spreading. I think to the siegers. Till death do its part. Uh-oh. My husband died. He died from his wounds. He never recovered. All right, pausing for a second. There is the case... I'm 42, but there is the case of uh, a marriage immediately. Um, should I immediately get remarried? So yes or no? There could be some advantages of getting remarried, like allies and whatnot. Um, you know, ooh, there's a genius here that I could marry. He's... You know, that would certainly... Well, I don't think I'm going to bear any more children. Um, but there there might be some alliances here. So if I go to alliance power... Actually, there's really no alliance power to be had. Not really. Um, oddly, yeah, there's not a single alliance to marry into. Look at that. Seriously? Oh yeah, we could we could we could see if we can have you know. I don't know about the age cutoff, but I'm pretty old. Uh, so if, if you're going yes, what should I marry for? Traits, benefits of skills, or um, what would be another good one? Personality. I could do looks, too. Uh, maybe one of them is handsome. Nope. Oh, you're the opposite of handsome. <laughs> you're scaly. You're albino. Sterile. Well, that's... Oh, yeah, here, here's someone that's handsome. It's greedy, arrogant, vengeful, but still handsome. Oh, so like Gaston. Uh, benefits of skills or traits seem to be the leading choice. Okay. So, benefits of skills. I don't think I would want to marry my steward, who's chaste. There's really no chance of uh, children. Now, this guy here actually has ridiculously good skills, too. This, um, Goldie of, uh, Slovig. He's actually quite skilled. So if I go, like, uh, sum of all skills, he is near the top. Next to Hjalmar. And, uh, a few others. Side Justin and Fickle aren't terrible, though. Yeah, so I think I think it'll be this guy. Children can inherit genius, which is okay. It does hurt my uh, it does hurt my prowess though considerably, but I don't think there's anyone um, that wouldn't hurt my prowess. Oh no, like I could marry a Stuart, I guess. Like anyone in my court, I suppose, but most people. Uh, hurt prowess considerably. High stewardship is best. So if I sort by stewardship, I don't really want... Because like uh, another, another concern is the amount of prestige that it costs me. Because I don't necessarily want to protect my prestige. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of great choices that don't hurt prestige considerably. Goldie does look best to me. Um, so I'm going to sort by prestige gain. Yeah, okay. So there's only really two that uh, don't kill my prestige. Uh, genius is a incredible trait for an error. You're not wrong about that. And he is also the smartest person that I could possibly get married to. 
Uh, so, there it is. Where am I even looking at? He accepts. My spouse. A bold paragon. Uh, let's go to council here. And you are going to assist me in patronage, maybe? Oh my god. How much patronage do I get? At... I get so much learning. <laughs> uh, just assist in general. That's fine. Because that's, uh... Mo... Uh... I don't know. It's a shame we're older, yeah, I know. Because we not likely to have kids. But, you know, all of our kids already are intelligent. They're not geniuses, but uh, intelligent is nothing to shake a fist at, right? It's the difference between plus three to plus five. And our, all, every kid that we have uh, is uh, intelligent. Uh, what societal goal would you propose at this point, given the uh, limited time we have left? Scald was swayed. All right, I probably can stop swaying Scald now, and I'm going to sway my own husband. Oh, I'm also going to have um, Scald. You are no longer going to educate Can. I know it's going to upset you a little bit. But I'm going to have my husband educate Kane because that makes a lot more sense given he's a super genius. And uh, and has the same amount of... Uh, actually, even has higher learning. So that's a, that's a no-brainer. Cap that. Sway compliments. Ooh. Uh, loyalty and honor. I, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to pick. Okay, he agrees. That was good. Yeah, I have no idea how to start that either, Talon, so if you have no idea, I can't do it for you. That's gonna be a non-starter. Oh, I forgot that Nalm... Yeah, there's a, there's a territory down here too that I need to cap because they just recently added that. I don't even see their armies though. Where are they? They're not attacking me, so that's really confusing. Archime! You're... I'm going to switch what my marshal is doing back to um, levies. Or actually, you know what? I could have them reduce man-at-arms um, maintenance and make it a little bit cheaper on me to hold them. And then go back to collect taxes with my uh, steward. My, unfortunately, not that skilled steward, but my steward nonetheless. And then that should make it a little bit less expensive to have my man-at-arms. Uh, on my prestige, which will be good. Uh, I don't have that kind of decision. I think uh, you you must be thinking of uh, decisions that are offered to non-Northmen, but Northmen don't have dueling societies. Oh, they're trying to counterattack. That's cute. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing right now to uh, bother with that. I'm going to finish the siege and then go crush them. Benefits from child tutelage. Uh, my son, Can, is more likely to receive a good education due to my husband, Nice. I made a good choice there, I think. I mean, he's uh, level 22 learning, genius, insightful. Um, might be a bit of a lunatic, though. I didn't realize he was a lunatic. But hey, 
comes with the genius, right? Come on, finish up. Two day, one day, done. Prisoner taken. We took uh, the chieftain's friend. You, Saga. All right, and do we make money from Saga? We do, for a little money, but I'll take it. I don't think she's... She doesn't... She's not capable... Um... She is somewhat good in diplomacy, but that's about all that she could be. Oh, I need to designate a guardian for Jackal. Jackal, what are you good at? You are diplomacy and learning as well. You know what? I'm going to have you educated by my husband as well. Because you seem to be following in the footsteps of genius as well, given that you have diplomacy and learning, so it makes sense. Uh, the ransom went through, and now we're going to hunt the army and uh, probably get enough war score to end this war. Not much of a war. I do have enough money to make a building investment. So we currently have stuff being built in Ladeheim and Popcorn, and M Mheim and Archheim are the only ones that could benefit. So... Um, where should I build? I barely have enough prestige to do it, but I, th I think it is uh, warranted. I think it is a wise decision to invest in our territory. And I'll speed time up because I know I'm just about out of time. Just to end this quick. Oh, wow. They're dead. I captured someone. Enforcing demands. And we gain fame and fortune alike. I have too many domain. Uh, but as you can see, we... So I need to give over a title to someone. And I think it's going to be Emheim. I'm going to grant Enheim title to uh, my husband. Who's now going to be a vassal husband. A little strange, I know. But it's uh, keeps it in the family. Uh, disbanding my armies. And then building in Archheim. And I'm just going to pick for sake of time. So, Archheim. You are going to go with, uh... Oh, we're missing one. Come on. One more month. All right. You're going to go with, uh... uh... Gathering Halls. Okay. Cool. We are in really, really good position. Uh, Alliance formed... With Jarl... Oh, yeah, okay. Alliance formed with my husband. Yeah, okay, duh. And then, uh, last but not least, we have another prisoner. We have... This guy is prisoner. I have no idea. We have both these guys here that have really no benefit to me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to um, release them without a hook, without anything. Just let them go. And this is where we're going to end. I feel... Uh, pretty successful. I mean, we're obviously not a mega nation or anything like that, but we started off just with Sagan, and now we have Sagan, Enheim, Ladeheim, Archheim, and this new territory here with a new title, and both of which will be named if, uh, you know, for all the people that stuck around, let's name them now. Kadath. Uh, what do you want this town to be named? This beautiful recent uh, acquisition. And then, uh, not just Kadath, but also... No, Pull Map Up doesn't get to... 
Because we, we not only that, but we also hold the title of the duchy. Oh, no, maybe we don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. The chieftain. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Kadath time. It's up to you. Kadaheim? How's that? You can always change it. Okay. So if we take a look at my titles. Sir. Oh, okay. So that's the still... That's still Sylvium. Okay, I didn't realize that. Uh, if we go to duchy titles, it's one big duchy. Uh... So we, we sort of united the duchy, I think. Yeah, we united the duchy. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Thank you for watching Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords, which originally aired live on Twitch. This series is a result of a poll I put out every week where my viewers get to determine what I play on Thursdays on Twitch. As of now, there has only been one stream for five hours of Crusader Kings 3, and if there is to be any more, it will have to win in the polls. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timer, and it also has links to these polls I was just mentioning. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode, and hopefully an upcoming stream.